Uh, I'm Maggie. I'm 26, and I've been in Thailand for three years. And uh, three years. And how many fights do you have? Like around 40. 40. Okay. Uh, so why did you first come to Thailand? Well, I was doing Muay Thai in New York, and it's a very different. Um, experience doing Muay Thai in America than it is in Thailand and I came to visit Thailand to just train and I really just wanted to jump in and see what I could do with it if I moved here and did it full-time instead of as a hobby. Were you like in love with it before yeah. you came here? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. And you were working full-time in the States? Yeah I was. What were you doing? I was a software engineer. So you just came here no expectations? <laughs> Yeah, I just got rid of my apartment and sold all my stuff and then Damn. just flew over here. <laughs> okay, and I had two fights, so I had like no idea what. Two fights? Yeah. I had two fights in New York and then I visited Thailand once for two weeks and then that was enough and then I just and bailed and came over. <laughs> when you so, came here for two weeks, where'd you go? Uh, Hua Hin and then around uh, Isan. Uh, we went to Lupuni Gym. Lupuni? Yeah. Okay. We were we only there for a couple of days. But... Loma, right? Yeah, yeah. Was she there when you were there? Yeah, she was there. Okay. So you've been in Thailand for three plus years now. Do you speak Thai? Or are you one of those foreigners that don't really <laughs> learn it ever? <laughs> I do speak Thai because that was really important to me to yeah. be able to. Um, not be dependent on a translator or on somebody else's English. So to be able to go um, other places in Ethan or other places, gyms where there's not a lot of English and be able to, you know, survive and <laughs> yeah. understand what was what was being said to me. Especially in Ethan where they're probably not going to know much English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how long do you think it took until you were, like, till you felt like you were fluent enough? Um, a couple of months. And, well, a couple of months of directed studying. I only took a couple months of classes, and then the rest was just either self-taught or just from um, so you being never, around, around in Thailand. So you never got an education visa? No. Oh, wow. I did one-on-one -on -one classes. I didn't want to do the whole group Oh, study. you did private classes? Yeah. Okay. So I just did some of those for a couple of months, because mm -hmm. um, I've learned languages really quickly. Um, yeah, software engineering. So I figured like one-on-one -on -one was the best way for me to like improve quickly and you know get, mm -hmm. didn't have to sit in the back of an easy class for a while. Nice. So now you're at Hong Kong. How long have you been there? I've been there the whole time. Um, I've done stints at other gyms mm -hmm. training for different fights or trying to improve specific things, but I've been I treat Hong Kong as like the home, the home base where everything like comes together. Yeah, right. And who's your like uh, main trainer there? Uh, Joe. 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 Okay. We know. Joe. Okay. What was your biggest uh, obstacle or challenge in your Muay Thai career? Um. Well, uh, last year I tore my ACL in a fight. Um, and that was uh, that was a pretty big obstacle because I had to go home and do knee surgery and then um, Muay Thai is pretty intense on the knees just yeah. you know the ACL controls pivoting so if you yeah. think about all of the pivoting that happens when you kick and when you do all of that stuff um, so that was like a really long um, a really long process to get to get back from you went back home to the states yeah mm -hmm. how long were you back home like six months that. How'd that affect your mental being away from Muay Thai and rehabbing and stuff? Um, generally, actually, it was pretty positive for me because it, like, there was never a question in my mind of, like, what I was gonna do or maybe I should retire, maybe it's time to, like, hang yeah. up the gloves. Like, I, it happened and I just decided that I was gonna come back and, um, do all of the, you know, all of the necessary steps to, mm -hmm. to come back. And then it, I was so focused because I was at home and I had nothing to do, you know, so mm -hmm. I was just doing rehab all day. Okay, Rocky Mountain. Every single day. <laughs> and 
And then so you had your six months. Yeah. <clears throat> you got back. What like what was your mindset? What happened? Uh, I came back and then I well it was six months until I could kick again. Okay. And then it was I took about like two and a half two and a half months after that of like just training and mm -hmm. kicking and falling mm -hmm. and all of the you know yeah. the unpredictable things that can happen in fighting. Um, so I did that for a couple of months and then I came back and fought again after yeah. that and then been consistent since then. Yeah. So. Nice. So who do you think was your toughest fight so far? Um, I think my last fight was the toughest because I fought I fought Tan and Janot on way hardcore and she's a really experienced and difficult opponent and then also it was in the little gloves which was a whole different mm -hmm. different thing didn't end up changing the fight as much as uh, you know i thought it would but um just something you know a new variable <laughs> thrown into the mix um but it was a really it was a tough fight because she's a really um really skilled and knows what to do mm -hmm. with you know every kind of fighter that she's given so and how'd that fight go? I won. You won. Three rounds. Yeah. What was the game plan going in? Um, don't do anything but me. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> before before these fights, Joe will tell me like, don't kick, don't block, don't waste time <laughs> with that. Like you're slow. <laughs> Acknowledge that you're gonna get kicked. And she's gonna kick you, and then you just walk in and meet her for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you watch like my last four fights, I haven't kicked at all. Mm, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just naming people to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So Joe knows you pretty well as a fighter. Yeah. So the whole three years that you've been working with him, and you guys have just been building here. Yeah, I mean he like he he sees the things that I have as a fighter and sees the things that I don't have as a fighter, which is why he can give me advice like that. Like I've gone to other gyms and I've told them that that was the advice that I've given and they've just like straight up laughed and like yeah. <laughs> gossiped about like this girl's coach tells her not to kick in fights. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cause it's silly, right? Like it takes away, you know, two of your yeah, weapons. weapons. Um, but he sees, you know, the things that I'm good at and like, I'm not going to win the speed kicking game. Mm -hmm. Like that's not what, yeah. you know, that's not what I do. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to, like, I think a lot of people have the mindset of work on all your weaknesses until you're, like, super well-rounded. But if you look at a lot of the greats, they have one or two really good things, and they just did them and trained them all yeah. the time until they were the best at it. Yeah. Know, I mean, I agree that you should, I would like to be more well-rounded. Yeah. Like, I'd like to do, you know, I still continue to work on these things. Yeah. And, like, hope that they'll come out in some good form, but it's like, you know, when you're doing a difficult fight. You have to do the things that you're you're gonna do and not work on. You know, I'm gonna work on yeah. my kicks and finding my range. Like you have to be like, no, I have to like just walk her down and knee her for yeah. <laughs> maybe take a couple tempo fights to yeah. <laughs> not fight a tough ass fight. Like, let me work on my punches for the first time. <laughs> nah, I definitely understand. Um, so I have a lot, not a lot, but I have a few female Muay Thai, female Mac Muay friends who live here. I love to hear their perspective on like the struggles as a female in fighting and just all the nuances that come with being a female here type of period. So do you have any like input on that specifically that you feel like differences between being a female? Um well, I mean it's it's pretty huge the the differences. I mean Super Gym only recently opened up to girls, yeah. and besides that, um, there weren't really that many big promotions for girls. Like Thai fights, done a couple. There've been like a couple of bigger promotions, but mm -hmm. mostly there's nothing like consistent besides stadium fights. Mm -hmm. um, and even now, like you can't. There's no big promotions for five round Muay Thai fights. Like I, yeah. I'm a five round fighter. It's just where I'm better. But everything else is three rounds because it's televised and so it's entertainment Muay Thai, which is similar, but different pacing and everything. Um, so there's still like no no opportunities for for that, for like bigger 
five round fights, or very few opportunities, not none. But. Yeah, I don't know of any five uh, round fights for the US right now. Yeah, well, especially now, especially, there's, yeah. especially now there's nothing, and then you think about um, how many fights there are. So Super Champ and Hardcore are consistent every every week, but there's one female fight on each card. So that's two female fights every week, while you're still running, you know, Lumpini and you know Channel Seven, and then the rest of the fights on Super Champ and Hardcore are boys. So you know, something to be said for there. Maybe there are more male fighters. Um, yeah. It needs to be, but, it should be more equivalent yeah. to the ratio, right? Yeah. Like if there's 12 to 1, <laughs> then the fight card should be 12 to 1. Yeah. But I think there are a lot more female fighters than the opportunity ratio. It's obviously, right not, now. it's obviously not proportional because a lot of girls are frustrated with the way that it yeah. is. So it's... Yeah. Um, that's true. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Only one female fight on two cards a week, that's four women in time <laughs> getting a fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's crazy. <laughs> Um, so, do you have any advice? Um, imagine I'm a female Nakamoy living in America, right, with dreams to move to Thailand and fight. Like, what advice, what things would you tell other <laughs> Um, I mean, the big, the, the biggest thing is finding a gym that you can trust um, the trainers at, because there are some gyms where they're not safe or where you're not respected, um, which is, you know, that there's a degree of that at almost every gym, but um, there are some gyms that are dangerous for sexual assault or, you know, some trainers who just aren't willing to see women succeed in different kinds of ways. And um, So if you've, if you've been around to a couple of gyms, you can get a sense pretty quickly of, you know, who, um, who's working with you and who's, you know, tolerating you. Who, yeah, and who's, who's tolerating you. And uh, also, you know, you can look at gyms where other girls mm -hmm. have trained or have fought and you can ask them for their experiences if you want to, you know, know something beforehand um, about the specific gym. It's true. I've been uh, talking with a few of my We've just been talking about making this type of organization, maybe starting with like a Facebook group for female Muay Thai fighters here in Thailand, everywhere, not just here in Thailand, uh, everywhere in the world. Not only for like to help with these, because there are so many unheard sexual assault cases that happen yeah. in gyms, and just educating women on the power dynamics of having a male coach and like the pro the problems that can arise, you know. Yeah. But also with like fight promotion and getting them in certain doors that they wouldn't be able to get into right now. I think yeah. that would help a lot. Uh, oh yeah, so, when you first came to Thailand, you had no aims, like really, you were just coming empty cup, like, right, and seeing what would happen. Yeah, Did you... I didn't really have anything to expect because I didn't have any context. Like, I had two fights, two fights. <laughs> so I didn't, you know, like I didn't come here and I was like, I'm going to be the greatest or, you know, I didn't have any kind of that ambition because it was all entirely unknown. And so I just figured I'd, you know, go as far as I could doing it full time yeah. and being able to fight more frequently and just see what, what happened. And if it was a disaster, I could just go back home. Yeah. And <laughs> So do you still have that same ambition or has it changed? Do you, have you added goals? Have you gotten less ambitious? What, has anything changed? I mean, generally, generally it's mostly still the same. Like I've, I'm, I'm proud of how far I've taken it and I would like to take it further. Um, and you know, in the end, like, I don't know how far I'll be able to go, but I want to go like, just to the, you know the the edge of my capability because when I retire I just want to be able to say like you know I did everything that I could I you know yeah. did every opportunity that I could 